Prison is usually a death sentence for a rapper's career, regardless of their conviction. While they may make a splash when they get out, the hype quickly dies as people don't often continue to care when you're not constantly in front of them. What if a rapper figures out a way to record new music while away though, and the quality of these songs are just as high, if not higher, than a lot of other musicians' music they make in a studio? Who is this rapper though? What led to him getting locked up, and how are they doing this? You have a prepaid call from... This is the story of Tory Lanez. Tory is most known for his songs, The Color Violet, Say It, Broken a Minute, and his feature on Jack Harlow's What's Poppin' Remix. While over the past three years he's grown bigger and bigger, becoming more popular, the beginning of his career might just shock you. The Canadian rapper and R&B artist grew up in Ontario, but his family ended up eventually moving to Florida. After his parents split up, he and his father moved to Atlanta, where he was given the nickname Lanes due to his carefree nature, specifically not checking before crossing the street or playing in it, and then was sent to live in Queens due to behavioral issues in 2006. He moved back to Canada to live with his grandmother in Toronto, but she refused to care for him, so at the age of 15, he was on his own, and it was every man for himself. Tori began to rap, he dropped out in the 10th grade and began to perform his music at local concerts. Continuing to develop his skills and sound, Tori discovered a love for singing, and if you go listen to his music, it's clearly a prominent sound. Lanes really began to make a name for himself in the music industry in 2009, while living in South Florida. When he dropped his debut mixtape, it came during a time when he was shooting his own videos and freestyling over stolen beats to then go and upload them on YouTube. And earlier I mentioned how the beginning of his career is a bit shocking, well, this is the shocking part. Tory Lanez was discovered by Sean Kingston. Yes, that Sean Kingston. Singer Sean Kingston back in Florida. Kingston, whose real name is Keyshawn Anderson, was extradited from California over the weekend. Sean liked his stuff, and once they met up, it led to Lanes joining him and performing on Justin Bieber's tour in 2010. Speaking of 2010, Lanes was also incredibly active this year. He released four mixtapes, which got him the opportunity to sign to SK's record label, Time Is Money Entertainment, which he used to release three more mixtapes. After this, he decided to go independent, which wasn't a bad idea because he had promoted himself to a point where he had some notoriety going, and now he was free to come and go as he pleases, with only himself to determine what music he makes and releases. He continued releasing mixtape after mixtape, and when 2014 rolled around, he was able to go on tour with a g Easy who was more popular than ever. Lanes then started what he called Fargo Fridays, where he'd only release new stuff on Fridays at Hot New Hip Hop, and then announced his first tour, which was called Lost Cause Tour. At this point in time, it's clear that the ball was completely rolling for Tory, and the only way for him to continue forward was to keep climbing. Tory kept the cycle going of releasing mixtapes, EPs, and singles, continuing to grow his audience, and then in 2015, he signed to Benny Blanco's Mad Love Records, a subsidiary of Interscope Records, and dropped the aforementioned single, Say It. This song would be the perfect lead single for a debut album as it blew up, and to this day, it's still one of his most streamed songs. Before the album came though, he released two more mixtapes. Chicks Tapes 3 and The New Toronto, followed with another single, and then continued to make more and more public appearances, release more and more music, and in August of 2016, he dropped I Told You, his debut album. Some remixes, a tour, more and more mixtapes, some of which he released as albums, leaving Interscope, and about four years later, four years later, we've reached the release of Daystar. If being black is being culture, what's the cancel culture? Sound like some white shit, them niggas planted on us. The Daystar was a big point in his musical career. He was back to being independent, and there was controversy about him going around that he addressed point blank. What controversy, you ask? Well, just the claims that he shot Megan the Stallion in the foot. More on that in just a bit. December 10th, 2021 marks the release of Alone at Prom. This is Tory's sixth album, and it's his biggest project to date by far. This album contains his biggest song to date, The Color Violet, and is a testament to how experimental he's been throughout his long career when it comes to expanding his sound. Alone at Prom was a synth-pop, rap, R&B album inspired by sounds from the 80s, and it's one of the best albums I've personally ever heard. He can thank TikTok for some of this popularity surrounding the album, as our favorite Chinese spyware turned brain rot infestation of a mobile app absolutely fiend over this album and specifically over the color violet. Tori followed this masterpiece, this magnum opus, with another album. This time it was called Sorry For What. Right off the back, I need y'all to flex. All of this stunt 
look good for my ex. All of these zeros look good on my checks. I got like two or three phones. This album wasn't nearly as big as Alone at Prom, however, it was still well received, charting at number 10 on the Billboard 200, and it also gave us some hits. What's that sound? That's the sound that I'm Remember when I said earlier that Tori got locked up and then later said that there was allegations of him shooting Megan the Stallion in the foot? Well, those two just so happened to be connected. Tori was found guilty of assault with a semi-automatic firearm, discharging a firearm with gross negligence, and carrying a loaded unregistered firearm in a vehicle on December 23rd, 2022, and was sentenced to 10 years of prison time. Now, I'm not going to go into all of the drama around the situation because that's enough information for a whole true crime series, but Tori refused to be taken down by what a lot of people don't believe to be a correct convention or sentencing. On July 25th of this year, he surprise released two singles from jail which he's calling the prison tapes hey yo umbrellas man what's good i'm talking to you live from prison right now man i'm, I'm just happy to get out that bullshit county jail they was hating on a young fly nigga you heard he's pairing these releases with releasing what he's calling the lost tapes but the real revelation here is he cracked the code on how to record music from jail these songs are incredible too with quality rivaling normal studio releases of music and it's raised a lot of questions how is he getting this quality though we can clearly hear through his message to the fans that the jail cell's phone is not high enough quality for somebody to just record the other end of it with him singing through. Well, a few theories have arisen and one of them by far makes the most sense and we actually may or may not have just been confirmed it during a jail cell raid. One, is he simply doing it over a phone call and his engineers are using AI to enhance and isolate his vocals, but that feels like a cop out. Joe Budden, one of the most vocally outspoken against him being arrested, going as far as calling it a setup, says that he believes Tori got his hands on recording equipment, but there's a much easier explanation of what's probably going on and how they're managing to achieve the quality that they are. He's managed to get a phone with band lab on it and a way of recording decent quality vocals, whether a microphone, AirPod, some kind of small recording device. And then he's sending it to his engineers so they have access to his stems and have a much easier time enhancing quality and truly mix and master the song as normal. This is what YouTuber Sky Jordan has to say and I personally think he's right. This makes the most sense and is by far the most realistic theory. And it was also proven that he did have recording equipment because it was raided and confiscated from him. He's currently sitting at just over 23 million monthly listeners on Spotify, and I think there's a real chance that by the time he gets out, this number could be even higher if he continues releasing the quality and quantity of music he currently is. What is this? What's that sound? <laughs> <laughs> What's that sound?